Okay, today we're talking about designing a top load dishwasher in Fusion 360. So the design intent here is to design a top load dishwasher that alleviates lower back pain for users with back problems like myself. Uh, I have degenerative discs in my lower back. So the simple act of bending down to put dishes in and out of the dishwasher uh, can irritate those degenerative uh, discs. <gasps> uh, we want to maximize energy efficiency by reducing the run times. Uh, this design is not going to incorporate any heating elements. And I found from my own experience running my dishwasher, I never have to use the heating elements for the wash cycle or even the drying cycle and we're going to utilize a single pump. You'll note most dishwashers today have two separate pumps. One is a drain pump to drain the dirty water out of the dishwasher. The other pump is a circulation pump that circulates the water during the wash and rinse cycle. We're going to utilize common, inexpensive, readily available parts as much as possible and the design should blend in with the existing kitchen countertops and cabinets. So it's almost going to be invisible. You won't even be able to tell there's a dishwasher there. Uh, and then keep the overall design simple. And no planned obsolescence here. Woo! So a little bit of research and some reference material. Uh, this is a 1948 GE top load dishwasher. So I want to make it clear I didn't design the first top load dishwasher ever, ever, ever. Uh, they have existed before. Um, they were built heavy duty back then, obviously. It was a big bulky appliance, as you can see. And not, not the prettiest thing. But there you go. And the issue with this one, it just has the lid that lifts up there. Um, my design intent is going to be slightly different with how mine works and you'll see that in a minute. So what's on the market today? Well from Home Depot you can buy one of these combination sink and dishwashers. You can see it's fairly small, doesn't hold a lot and you lose one of your your sink basins and they're you know, a little expensive. You can buy a regular dishwasher for less than that, for about half that price. Wow. Or you can buy one of these portable countertop dishwashers. And just a quick disclaimer, this video is not a paid promotion for Autodesk or Walmart or Home Depot or any make, model, or brand of dishwasher. following video playback speed has been sped up in the interest of saving time. So here we open Fusion 360, start a new project, save it as top load dishwasher. And I want to see the origin, the X, Y, and Z. I'm going to start out by creating a rectangle. I'm going to extrude the rectangle and this will give me sort of a shell of the overall dimensions that I want the dishwasher to occupy. So I want to keep the dishwasher within this area. And we'll make it transparent. And just for reference, I made this dishwasher the same footprint as a standard dishwasher that you would see on the market today. I'm going to add some electronic actuators from McMaster Car's website. Just drop them in as an SAT file. So instead of having to 3D model every nut, bolt, screw, washer, etc., there are a lot of parts you can just bring into your 3D model to save yourself some time. McMaster Car is one of those places. To make a second one, I'll 
I'll simply select this one and copy it. And there's my two electronic linear actuators. And I'll save my work as I go. And then I'm going to look for the fresh water, hot water solenoid valve. And I'm also going to look for a three-way solenoid valve. Essentially a ball valve with a solenoid that controls it. So yeah, that's a three-way ball valve controlled by electronic solenoid. That'll attach to the pump. And depending on which way that valve is positioned, you either send water out to the discharge to the drain line, or you send the water to circulate through the dishwasher. And that's how I eliminate having to have two pumps. That's how I get away with just having to have one pump. There's our pump. There's a pipe nipple. And again, just bringing these parts in from McMaster Car's website. I'm going to bring in a pipe bushing next. To go from one inch to three quarter, NPT. So this 3D model that I'm making is just a conceptual 3D model. This is not the end product of this 3D model is not meant to go into production. It's just meant to convey the overall design idea showcase what components we're using, where they're located, etc. So now I'm looking for the water solenoid valve. That's the where the hot water line will connect to. So when that valve opens, you'll be sending hot water into the wash tub. You can see these are just all standard stock, readily available components. And then the rendering screen, we're going to add some color to help differentiate the different components, make them pop more on the screen. back in the design screen. And again, save as you go. Now I'm adding a float switch. The float switch protects the pump so we don't run our pump dry and let it cavitate. When the float switch floats up, it means there's enough water in there to run the pump. When it floats down, it tells the pump to shut off. And there's vertical mount, horizontal mount, made out of different materials, plastic float switches, stainless steel, depending on your application. And again, these are commonly available. Granger, McMaster Car, SupplyHouse.com, look on Google, you know, eBay, Amazon, etc. So again, common parts. I'm gonna render, just add some color to this float switch, black and white. And then I want a, a power terminal block that the incoming power wires will land on and then from there we can distribute out to our inline fuses and then to each of the electrical components like the the pump motor the solenoid valve float switch etc i'm not going to go into all the detail of showing every single wire where every single wire goes that would take too much time Again, I'm just trying to show the overall concept. 
There's our terminal block, one of them. I'm going to do some rendering on that. Save as I go. The great thing about um, doing 3D modeling in Fusion 360 is you can see it's very quick and easy and simple to manipulate things, to move things around. I'm just using the, the extrude command, but I'm doing the cut operation on it to remove some material. Now I'm in the sketch uh, sketch mode, and I'm doing a sketch on top of that rod on the electronic actuator. And I'm going to make a steel mounting plate with mounting holes. So I'm sketching the mounting holes. And then we can extrude the plate up to make it a 3D object. Extrude command, pull it up to a quarter of an inch. And we're going to say new body, OK. I'm going to copy that, make a second one, and drag it over to the other linear actuator. I'm actually going to change those mounting plates a little bit later on in this video. And again, that's a great thing about working in Fusion 360 is you can iterate as you go along and make changes quickly and easily on the fly. Looks good for now. I decided I want to extend this and connect both of the mounting plates, obviously. Make it one solid plate. That way both linear actuators work in unison. And I got the idea for these linear actuators to raise and lower the top lid uh, from those standing desks. You know, a lot of offices nowadays like to use these standing desks that raise up and down. So that's basically the same idea I'm using here. I'm doing a sketch to add the center uh, swivel spray tube. It can be a stainless steel pipe, basically. There you go, extruded it out. And I'll use the shell command to make it an actual hollow pipe. I'm going to extrude out this metal plate and then do a sketch on the face of this plate and turn this into a gusset. And so remove that material I don't want. There's my gusset. Again, I can copy that and drag the new, new copy over to the other side. And I'll have my two gussets. Woo! And that's just to provide structural integrity or rigidity to that top mounting plate and to the, the swivel spray tube. Obviously the top two inches of that swivel spray tube are not going to swivel because they're attached to the gussets. <laughs> we'll address that as we go along. Yeah, it looks good. And then the way I'm going to mount that mounting plate to each of those actuators is with the large countersink uh, hex head screw. And again, just bringing that in from McMaster Car's website. Place one of them to make a copy. Place the other one. Done. Trying to get everything lined up. I'm going to remove these mounting ears on the bottom as well. I don't need those and I want these to mount directly to a, a bottom plate with those same countersunk hex head screws that we use for the top. There, now I got a bottom mounting plate. Just 
just getting it centered up. I'm going to move the, the pump motor assembly up, see where I want to place it within that footprint. Now again, this, this pump and motor assembly is way larger than you really need to use for a dishwasher. But again, this is just a representational 3D model. This is not for the finish line for, for, for production. This is just a concept design. And I wasn't able to find a smaller pump model on McMaster Car's website to bring in here. So I had to work with what was available. You can see I'm starting to place things where I think they should go. The float switch we really can't place until I create the wash tub. We'll do that later. So there I added the mounting screws for the bottom. Looks good. And I want to extrude a back plate so that way the terminal block has something somewhere to mount and that solenoid valve has somewhere to mount. And I'm going to get rid of these wires. They're not necessary for this 3D model. And I simply use the extrude command and then I click down there on operation cut. that easy. Now I'm just taking some measurements. I'm in sketch, commo uh, sketch command mode. And now I'm going to make the, the wash tub, extrude it up, and then we'll use the shell command to make it a hollow shell. So it's an actual wash tub. I beveled the corners as you'll notice. And then in the render, we'll find a white plastic. There you go. I'll place it about where I think I want it to be. And I still have clearance all the way around. And now I'm going to make the stand that the wash tub will sit on. So you can see it's a flat bar frame. And I'm going to extrude four round legs. One in each corner. I just need to move some things a little bit. Stand is done. Wash tub sitting on the stand. Now I'm going to start working on making the dish racks. I'm going to make one dish rack, extrude it, and then simply copy it to make the second dish rack. And everything you see in blue is the selected active items. So if I extrude this, it's only going to extrude those blue selected areas, nothing else. There we go. So again, all these little blue squares that you see is what I'm going to extrude. So very shortly, it's going to look like a, a dishwasher dish rack. And it's a new body. Okay. So you can see it's starting to come together.
So now I'm selecting just the outer perimeter and I'm going to copy it, move it up. I inadvertently lost my grid, so I'm just re extruding it. New body. There you go. Then we'll select everything. So everything selected in blue is what I'm going to copy to make the second dish rack. There's our two dish racks. And I think I'm going to make them a little bit shorter now. There we go. They're a little bit too tall before. You'll note the top mounting plate has disappeared. If you look over in the browser, you'll see little eyeball symbols. Some are crossed out, some are dark. If it's crossed out, that means it's hidden. If the eyeball is dark, that means it's visible. So that comes in handy when you're extruding things or moving things around or you need to see inside of something, you can always hide certain bodies, certain components, hide your sketches, etc. Just by toggling on and off on those little eyeball symbols in the browser. I'm just trying to clean up my work. And I want to make a little recess. That recess is going to accept the lid and the rubber seal that's going to create a watertight seal between the lid and the top of the wash tub. Because when the unit runs and it's spraying water out the spray arms, you don't want water spraying out of that connection or that joint, that seam. So I'm going to bring in a fitting. This fitting is where the hot water will enter the wash tub. See, I drilled a hole, placed the fitting. I'm going to bring in some stainless steel pipe elbows to connect everything. There you just saw me do an offset plane and the pipe command to connect that hot water inlet elbow with the solenoid valve. And then in render, I'm going to turn the water lines red just to make it pop more, make it obvious. Woo! I'm going to copy that elbow, move it down, and start plumbing in my pump and my three-way ball valve. So the water either comes out of the pump and back into the spray arms to circulate the water for wash and rinse. That's what I'm doing now. Or it goes out that second port and it's going to discharge the dirty water out the drain hose. And again, from a, if you're from a production standpoint, we would do an official parts list and be a lot more detailed with the 3D model. This is just conveying the general idea of how things connect together, how things will look, etc. And all the hot water lines I'm trying to model in red. So now I'm making that top plate larger to match the diameter of the bottom mounting plate. I was playing with the idea of adding some sides and some gussets, but I think I'm going to take those off. Because I want this design to be readily accessible, so if you ever have to repair or replace the pump or a valve, you can 
easily get to it, reach in there, disconnect it, install the new one, etc. So back in the sketch command, so I made some more mounting holes. That's where you'll screw or attach your kitchen countertop segment to the top of this dishwasher mounting plate. So as an example, we'll make a kitchen countertop segment. Let's make it look like granite. There you go. So you see how that'll hide the top of the dishwasher. You won't even see it. So when you push the button, it'll raise up that section of your kitchen countertop with the top of the, the top uh, plate of the dishwasher. And the dish racks will also rise up to make it easy to put dishes in and out of the dish rack. Wow. So I'm just quickly looking for some electrical components to make the timer knob and the, the switch to raise and lower the linear actuators. And I'll make a small control box to house the electrical components and wires and the timer. Just a simple box and again if I was modeling this for actual production we would have to show the internal components for this it's not necessary so there's our, our rocker switch there's our timer knob for the cycle And I'm going to install also a strain relief for the power cord coming into it. Just to make it look a little bit more realistic and clear what it is. And then I'll render that strain relief, make it black. I want to add some mounting screws because that front plate on that box need some mounting screws and that's how you would access the wires inside. Again, I just bring in one screw and then copy it three times. There you go. I'm going to add some labels to the front of this. So under uh, uh, the surface, drop down menu, say new sketch on this front face and say add text. So on the rocker switch we'll make text that says open and closed. Then we'll label the knob wash cycle. So that's where you would turn the knob to turn on the dishwasher and set the wash cycle. And then once we finish this sketch, then we'll extrude out these, uh, these words to make them pop a little bit more and make them better to see. And then in render, we'll, we'll paint them red to make them more highly visible. And my thinking was this little control box would be mounted behind a hinge down kitchen drawer front so you wouldn't see it when the dishwasher is not in use. I 
right about there. So you would hinge down that kitchen drawer front, push the open or close button, that section of countertop would raise up with the dish racks, load your dishes, push the close button, set your wash cycle, good to go. So that's pretty much it. So again, that's pretty much the finished 3D model of this top load dishwasher. You can see all of our major components. And this is what I was talking about. It would simply fit right into a space between your existing lower kitchen cabinets, just like a regular dishwasher does, except this front hinged drawer face would hinge down to allow you access to the controls but then be hidden when not in use it would hinge back up and then this this larger panel wooden panel essentially like a, a kitchen cabinet door panel and you could pop that off to access your pump your linear actuators your water supply valve your 3a ball valve etc again provide you plenty of room to reach everything quickly and easily and I, my thought was the face frame would simply pocket screw to the existing face frame on either side of your kitchen cabinets. Give you a better look from underneath at the components. See we have the fresh water in, our three-way ball valve, the float switch, solenoid valve where your water supply hose would attach. You see the yellow arrows indicate directionality of flow, our 120 volt AC pump. You get the idea. And then just a better view of the two dish racks that stack on top of each other. And they would just sit in the wash tub. You can see the spray arms, they spin 360 degrees. And there's a quick connect swivel fitting with the rubber seal so when that whole top lid lifts up and that uh, center swivel pipe lifts up with the spray arms and everything that quick connect swivel fitting will stay there if that makes sense i hope this tutorial helped please like share subscribe and leave me a comment for future video topics you would like me to cover. Thanks for watching.